we're going to install Maven on a Mac running the latest version of Mac OS. We'll be using Mac OS 13 Ventura, but these instructions will work on any Mac you might have. Stick around until the end of the video, and I'll show you how to verify the installation of Maven is working correctly by building and running a simple application. We'll be installing Maven from the command line, so I've opened up a terminal window for us to work in. Let's verify our Mac OS version by running the command swvers, or software version, from the command line. We're running Mac OS version 13, and the build version ID shown here translates to Ventura. You'll have to trust me on that one. To install Maven, the primary requirement is to have Java installed, so let's verify that we have Java installed on this machine. To do that, we type in Java dash dash version. We're running Java version 11, which is fine for Maven to run successfully. Now let's see if we have Maven installed on this machine already by running the Maven command mvn dash dash version. We get an error message, which means we either don't have it installed or it's not in our executable path. In our case, it's not installed on this machine. Let's fix that. First, we'll open a browser and search for Apache Maven Download. We'll click on a link that brings us to the Maven welcome page. Let's click on the download link. We see here that we'll be installing version 3.8.6 of Maven. Next, we see the system requirements to run Maven. They're actually quite modest. We need the Java JDK version 1.7 or above. There's no minimum for memory, and only 10 meg of disk space is required. Let's scroll down to see the files available for download in the files table. We can download either the binary versions of the files or the source code. We want the binary, and since we'll be installing our Mac, let's get the tar.gz file, which is a compressed archive of Maven. We'll save the file to our download directory. Now let's download the corresponding checksum file for the tar file we just downloaded, and save that file to our downloads directory also. Back in our terminal window, we see the two files were downloaded by running ls. First is the tar.gz, which contains the Maven application, and the .sha512 file, which contains the checksum. So what's the purpose of the checksum file, in this case, the SHA-512 file? The file contains a string of 128 hexadecimal characters, which is the output of the SHA-512 hashing function. The value represents the hashed form of the tar file we're about to install on this machine. It's a way to ensure that the file we downloaded from the Maven site has not been corrupted in transit and gives us some level of confidence that the file is genuine and hasn't been tampered with. Should even one bit change in the original file since the hash was computed, the hash value will be different and our comparison will fail. To compute the checksum locally, we run the command sha sum a 512 and then the name of the tar.gz file we downloaded. That writes out a 128 character string to the terminal which is our checksum, along with the name of the file that we ran the checksum on. We'll need the data in the file to do the comparison, so let's run the command again, but this time we'll use the greater than operator to save the output to a file we'll call temp file. Now we need to open up the temp file and get rid of the name of the tar.gz file since it's not part of the checksum and will cause our comparison to fail. By the way, I'm using a VI editor here. If you're interested in learning more about VI, please leave a comment below. Next, because of the way the comparison command works, we'll need to add an end of line character to the SHA 512 file. Right now, there's an end of file character, which will confuse the comparer utility when we do the comparison. So let's open the SHA 512 file with VI, jump to the end of the line, and hit the A key to add an end of line character to the checksum, and then we'll save the contents of the file. Now we're ready to compare the checksum values using the compare command. We'll type in CMP the name of our temp file, and the name of the SHA-512 file we downloaded. And look at that, we get no results, which in this case is a good thing. It means no differences are found, so our tar.gz file is good. Next step, let's uncompress and expand the tar.gz file. To do that, we'll use the tar command with the option xvf in the name of the tar.gz file. If we type ls, we see a new file in the downloads directory, which is the directory containing our Maven application. If we run the find command on that directory, we see the contents of the Maven package, including all the subdirectories and files. We don't want to leave the Maven file in our downloads directory, which is the location for temporary storage. 
We'll move the directory Apache dash Maven dash three eight six under the slash user slash local directory. We'll use the mv or move command to do so, and we'll need to use the sudo command to allow us to run this command as a super user or root user of this machine. When we run the sudo command, we're prompted for our password as a safety measure, since we'll be moving the directory to a location on the machine that's usually protected, the user local directory. Now let's change the directories to the user local Apache Maven 386 bin directory and run ls. Here we see the Maven installation files that we'll use in our projects. To make this work, we need to add this directory to our path so we can execute the Maven application. Let's copy the directory name and open the etc paths file once again with sudo since this is an administrative task. We'll add a line to the bottom of the file and paste in the directory name we just copied. And let's right quit and save that file. Now let's open a new terminal window and run mvn dash dash version. And there we are, we see the new version information in the Maven home directory. And that's all we need to do to install Maven. Prior to Maven version 3, it was necessary to set up the environment variable Maven home or M2 home, but that's no longer necessary. Let's verify our Maven installation by generating some code, compiling, and packaging it. To do this, we'll use an archetype. Archetypes are a great way to quickly construct a basic application, and there are hundreds of archetypes to choose from. We'll create a directory called MVN project and cd into it. We'll use the quick start archetype to create a very basic Maven application by typing in MVN archetype colon generate dash d group id equals com dot begin secure dot app dash d artifact id equals my app dash d archetype artifact id equals maven dash archetype dash quick start dash d archetype version equals 1.4 dash d interactive mode equals false if you're unsure what all these commands mean, check out this video I have linked here for a complete explanation. Because this is a new installation of Maven, we'll download a lot of required dependencies from Maven Central to our local cache. When it's done, we see the message build success along with the coordinates of our application. A directory called myapp has been created. Inside that directory, we find the pom.xml file that was generated, as well as the root directory where our source code is located. If we run the find dot command, we see the code in the directories that were generated for us. The file app.java is a small sample application that we can run to prove everything is working. We want to assemble and generate code into a jar so that we can use it to execute our code. To do that, we'll run the command maven package. If these steps are unfamiliar to you, check out this video I have linked here that will walk you through the process so you're clear about what's going on. When Maven finishes, we get the build success message once again. If we run the find.command again, we see a lot more files that were generated for us. The file we're primarily interested in is the myapp 1.0 snapshot.jar file, which is in the target directory. Let's cd into the target directory. Let's run the command java-cp for class path. Specify myapp 1.0 snapshot.jar. We'll make sure it's added to our class path and then the fully qualified name of the application code we generated, com.beginsecure.app.app. Running that code, we get the output, which is simply the message, hello world. At this point, we verified the installation of Maven was successful, and we're ready to get to work creating awesome applications. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.